Hello lovelies, I am back again. I don't know what's wrong with me. <laughs> I have a need to speak, I guess. But first of all, I have to do something very important. I want to shout out to um, a couple of people that have just been so absolutely beautiful and have left me like absolutely gorgeous reviews that have literally brought me to tears. So Resident Society, whoever you are, thank you so much, darling. And Riblets in the United States, you really, really touched my heart. And it is such a huge compliment to say that I am continuing the magical Egypt dynasty. And then BB darling, thank you, BB. Thank you for all your love, darling. Um, Jens and I talk about you often and uh, you really do push us forward. So thank you so much. And of course, this podcast is for Ray Bay West, who also left me a gorgeous review that I have mentioned before. But Ray Bay, I heard you, darling, on your comment and it's like the universe sent me a message just for you. So today we're going to be talking a little bit about reality creation and the role that each of us plays within this co-creation of reality. There's some really <laughs> crazy ideas out there about reality creating. There is kind of a new age version of it in which the idea has been promulgated that we create our own realities. Like we create the entirety of all reality ourselves. And I have a few problems with that. A, it's inaccurate. And B, because there is a small truth to it, it is easily ingested sometimes as being an entire truth. And the small truth is like this. If it is raining outside, it's up to you whether you say, oh shit, I hate rain, I'm going to be miserable all day, or I'm going to put singing on the rain and I'm going to go outside and I'm going to dance in the rain, thereby having a great day in the rain. So in one respect, yes, you are in control of how you react to certain things in your reality. And as a result of that, you are in charge of how you feel about reality. And so, yes, you are in charge of your internal landscape, but that does not mean that you are, in fact, creating the entirety <laughs> of reality. And even further, I was speaking with a young man yesterday. Reality is really interesting. Reality will set itself up in order to teach you the specific lessons that you need to learn. So again, that might lead you to believing that you are creating reality. But again, it's not exactly the way that it works. So yesterday, my dear Ray Bay is very much like myself at the moment. Not exactly excited about what we're seeing in the world. And it can get you down. It can get you really down. It can get you anxious, as I explained the other day. And this is exactly what the powers that be want us to be. They want us to be in fear. They want us to be in anxiety. They want us to be demoralized and depressed. But more importantly, they want us to hold in our minds the vision that they want for the future because they know they need us 
to create it because reality is co-created. Why do you think there's all this propaganda? Why do you think there's all these movies about a dystopian future? Why do you think there's so much news about a financial crash? Well, there's somebody who can do a much better job than I at explaining this. So here is more Cliff High. Yes, I'm having another Cliff High moment again. And I'm going to come back at the end of it because there is a ramification that I want to speak to you about and a simple, easy thing that you can do to literally change the world. So listen to what Cliff has to say, and I'll be back in just a minute. So we're going to reference stuff that is sort of covered by Robert Sapolsky in his book, Behave. So uh, if you want to get into it, it's a big, thick book. Uh, you can't like read through it like a novel. You got to stop and digest it as we go along. But it, um, it's pertinent to the stuff I'm going to go through today. We're going to talk about reality, and there are there will be tests, okay? So there's going to be a test to this. Uh, so just be advised. I'm not going to give you the test. Reality is going to give you the test. So reality could be described in this particular manner that I'll do uh, in just a second. Uh, many of the New Age kind of people, they'd go along with me on some of these uh, statements as to how reality exists, uh, because uh, what I'm going to say that basically is reality exists in the now, and that's why we always say live in the now, right? Uh, but it doesn't exist in the future or the past. We have memories of the past which are distorted. Uh, they become more distorted over time. They become diminished over time. And uh, so the past becomes diminished over time unless we write it down or take video, et cetera, et cetera, right? Okay, but so reality can be thought of, let's just say that, that this were the baseline of reality. And we are here, okay? And we're right at the very edge of where the future forms. Because the future does not exist. We form it just ahead of our collective arrival in it. And so this would be an easy thing understood by many Eastern religions, by uh, Brahmanism, etc., etc. Uh, not so much in the ideas of um, Christianity and stuff, because they have the idea that that we might be here and and reality exists way the hell out there, and we're just going along on this already existent <laughs> substrate. And it doesn't work that way, okay? So, so that understanding of our current situation, physics, etc., is not valid. Now, the future is a range, okay? It's not an existent state now. It is a, a range of probability. And so the probability of our future extends from here, which would be, uh, you know, bizarro extinction, right? Extinction ideas. Uh, let's, let's, let's go with the common understanding. I didn't want to get into the, the dualism involved in all this, but let's go with it this way. Okay, so let's put extinction down here. And let's put up here ascendancy, all right? So we have a range. We have a potential. We have a range of uh, probabilities potentiality. So this is this whole area here is the range of our potential. Okay, so within that range of potential, any given manifestation is an element of our total collective probability of a particular path. So this this line here is really illusionary, okay, because our reality is formed collectively by all of us. And so there's millions of people up here having their realities go along at all these different areas, right? Different from what we could call our base actual reality, all right? And so each one of these collectively, this is like 7 billion humans that are forming our now and heading us this way. And so our future forms out of our collective now, okay? Uh, sort of makes sense. And so the New Age people are correct when they, to some extent, when they talk about co-creation, just not in the way that they quite think. But collectively, we are all co-creating along with the pulse of universe 
our current now, and that determines the future. So, our future will be an aggregate of all of the people that are existent in the now as we move into that future. And thus, if all of our people were focused on extinction, we would have a higher probability of having an extinction event. On the other hand, if all of the people are focused on an ascension kind of a thing, then we'd have a higher probability of having that path. Now, note that, as I said, this is illusionary. The, the now line is, it is like something like this, because the future changes constantly. The now is constantly uh, being altered by where all of the billions of people are in their collective understanding of what the hell's happening at this moment. And so, if we all looked up and saw space aliens, then that would drastically alter the now, okay? And so, our now, which might be bumbling along down here, might shoot way the hell up there. And this is an aspect of consciousness, both little consciousness like in our noggins and big consciousness like Power's universe. All right, so this view here, our baseline, it's a representation of movement, okay, through time. And that representation of movement is why I say it's flattened out, but that we really are hugely variant at any given point in uh, the now. And in this particular now, right at this moment, there's a lot of people that are concentrated on thinking about Clarence and the Supremes versus the Mother Weffers, right, in the Battle of the Bands. And so, a lot of people are thinking about that. And so, our current now line is way up here with all of those people that are thinking about that because of the sheer mass of people that are drawing us into some amount of probability relative to that future. And that's the way it works. And this is why you would see why this would make sense for the, the Mother Weffers to try and take over the propaganda mill to convert everybody's attention span to a particular direction that they may skew the formation of the future. That's basically what they're trying to do. Now, there's a whole lot of reasons that that doesn't work and it comes back to bite you in the ass, okay? Trying to steer the collective mass of, of humanity at that level for purposes at that level is fundamentally not doable and it sets up a, a resistance in universe that builds and builds and builds until it overwhelms your effort. Okay, so there is a lot more to this, but I didn't want to uh, keep you <laughs> online for 40 minutes. But it's great. He goes into mind viruses and he goes into how our hormones affect our behavior that affects our reality and how our food and our air and our water affects our hormones. And it's very, very interesting. So Please check out the link below and uh, you can see the whole thing. Also, you'll get to see the drawings, which do actually help. So what's the takeaway from this? Well, there's many, but there's one little tiny thing that we can all do every day with every encounter that we can do to ensure better odds of a future that we all want to live in coming to fruition. The simple act of kindness is something that can literally change a person's day, literally change a person's life. And it doesn't have to be a big thing. It can be the tiniest, small thing. But literally, it can turn somebody around from being in a very, very dark state to giving them hope. Imagine for a moment that somebody gave Hitler a compliment about his art, a kind word, some appreciation, some encouragement, right at that moment where he was desolate about his destiny and was at a turning point. Who knows, right? But there's a possibility that kindness could have changed his entire trajectory. But let's bring it home. Acts of kindness can go a long way to changing that voice inside the head that's been installed by the powers that be. And acts of kindness just don't work on the receiver. They work on the giver as well. I know that when I 
genuinely deliver a heartfelt smile to a girl in a checkout line and I get a surprised look of gratitude (laughs) and a smile back. It makes me feel fantastic and it gives me hope about the future of humanity. I was listening to Drew Barrymore the other day and I think she encapsulated it better than I've heard it in a long time. So let me leave you today with a little bit of the fabulous Drew. More soon, lovelies. A quote uh, occurs to me from Pablo Picasso who (laughs) said, uh, I do not do drugs, I am drugs. Oh. And this is the effect that you have on people. I don't know if you know that. But you make them happy and you, uh, you... Thank you. <laughs> I'd like to. I don't want to be an asshole ever. Oh, yeah, it's I've, just never not... seen, I've never seen anything but love from you. I, I feel like, aren't we, if, or, I don't know, I feel like I am, I won't speak for Oprah or anyone else in the world. <laughs> I do feel like the power of an exchange, even if you're just buying something from someone in a like little convenience store somewhere and you just have this exchange with them and this power of like your face pulling up and your eyes and pupils dilating towards them just to have a kind exchange. That is so powerful to me, like that we could and need to be so nice to each other. Isn't every encounter an opportunity to uplift each other? Mm -hmm. That's truly how I go through life. I do march in the army of optimism. Oh, that's great. Thank you. March in the Army of Optimism. Yeah. How's the chow in the Army of Optimism? (laughs) More soon, lovelies. And in the meantime, I just wanted to let you know that the Magical Egypt Black Friday sale is now on with 50% off of all of Magical Egypt products including the Three Magical Egypt series, The Great Work, Sexual Alchemy of the Thoth Tarot. So if you are looking for a Christmas gift for a loved one or even for yourself, now is a great time to check out the Magical Egypt website. Visit www.magicalegypt.com. 